so that we can know your voice, pick it out from any that assaults us, and be the sheep of your flock. Father, we want to go where you lead. I don't think anybody in this room would say they don't want to. And yet sometimes there's fear in that. Sometimes there's change. Sometimes we think that where we are might be better than where we're going. Father, help us trust you. You are always moving us into new places of life and joy and peace with you as you lead us as our good and faithful and true shepherd. As we sing, Father, may you open our eyes to see all that you desire for us, to see and to hear your voice and yours alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning's scripture is in, in um, the book of John, verse, chapter 10, verses 22 through 30. And in the Pew Bibles, it's either 871 or 1667. Then came the Feast of Dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Thank you, Mary, and thank you for reading some strange passage from Luke. <laughs> she came up here to look, and she's like, this just doesn't make sense. And then she realized she was in Luke, not in John. <laughs> but I thank you very much for stepping in this morning and filling this role. Would you pray for, with me? Pray for me, too. <laughs> Father, uh, thank you so much for the time we have had thus far in your word and uh, in prayer in song. Thank you, Father, that we can be in this place this morning. We ask that you will quiet our hearts, focus our minds and our thoughts, that we can hear your voice today, that we can know you, and that we can follow you as your sheep. In Jesus' name, amen. So children know their mother's voice. You know, babies, uh, they've done research that uh, babies can know how their mother's voice sounds from even in the womb. And often when there's an infant that's crying or needs soothing, when they hear their mother's voice, that can be enough to calm them down. I even saw a video on Facebook in the last week or so of a little baby that was just crying and crying and was just handed a piece of mom's clothing and the smell, knowing mom, was enough to calm that child down. Uh, we can often distinguish our mom's voice in a crowd, just like we can those people that we you know, care about. We can hear that voice and know who it is. Uh, but knowing your mom's voice is more than just the sound, the pitch of it. Many times, and my daughters and my mom are both here today, many times I'll be talking with my daughters and one of them will say, you sound just like grandma. <laughs> they know the kinds of things that grandma would say, and they hear it from me. And so today, you know, our message is hearing the voice of the shepherd. It's not just knowing a pitch or a sound, it's knowing what the shepherd would say, who the shepherd is. But yet we're surrounded in this world by just an enormous number of voices. Many of you will remember in days past there was the slogan, when E.F. Hutton speaks, everyone listens. Don't you wish it were that easy when God speaks? And can we even distinguish his voice amid the cacophony of voices that are around us? So I'm going to ask you as we start this message, what voice 
are you listening to? Think about it. Do you listen to CNBC, Fox, ABC, CBS? Who do you listen to? Do you take your word from Dr. Phil or Dr. Oz or Oprah or who? Who do you listen to? Do you listen to the voice of human beings? What the world says is wisdom. Do you listen to the voice of self? I know what's best for me. <clears throat> or do you listen to the voice of deception? The voice of deception says it doesn't matter what voice you follow, they all lead to the same place. There are so many voices, so who do you listen to? It's important to answer this question because who you listen to determines your path. Jesus calls us his sheep and says that we will know his voice. But it can be hard sometimes to distinguish his voice amidst all the voices that are around us. Now, Jesus calls us sheep, and there's some things we should know about sheep. It's not necessarily a compliment to us, let's just say that. You know, sheep are known for having poor eyesight. They're known for following the wrong leader sometimes. And they're known for making bad decisions. If you want some examples of that, Dick Jones can tell you. We were actually just talking about some of his sheep last week. Um, the one I remember is that you always get these calls that you have a sheep in the fence that needs help because she sticks her head through the fence to eat the grass on the other side and then can't figure out how to pull her head back through. Sheep don't always make good decisions. And Isaiah 53, 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way to the voices that we want to hear. Several weeks ago, when Patrick preached, if you were here, he talked about Shrek the sheep, a sheep who managed to elude his masters for seven years. We need a shepherd, and we need to know our shepherd's voice. Dennis Deese says that it's characteristic of sheep to not know where they're going, and they need to be led. They must be led. And Jesus said he was the shepherd or leader of the sheep. He said his sheep would know his voice and follow him instead of the strange voices of man, of self, or of Satan. In today's scripture, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. And early in, there, in that chapter, if you have chapter 10 open in front of you, in verse 1, Jesus says, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief. And abandoned. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. You see, there are multiple voices, there are multiple sources wanting us to hear and follow them, but there is only one shepherd. It's his voice that we need to recognize and follow, and we need to run from other voices. Claire Sauer wrote in a call in the cacophony, to this day in the Middle East, a shepherd will go into a crowded sheepfold and call out his own sheep one by one, naming them. They will recognize his voice and come to him. An Anglican priest toured the Holy Land many years ago. One day on his travels, he saw several different groups of sheep converging together on a watering hole. As he watched the meeting, he thought to himself, now there's going to be trouble. They'll all get mixed up, and the shepherds won't like this. But the sheep continued to come together until they formed one big flock of sheep. They all looked alike, a big mass of white wool. What will they do now, the priest thought. How will the shepherds ever separate them out? The priest was intrigued enough to stay for a while. And when the sheep had finished drinking, he was amazed at what he saw. Each shepherd gave out a cry. Each let go of his unique call. And almost by magic, the sheep divided back into their original herds. The Lord is your shepherd. He wants you to hear his voice. There's a slide 
um, on the screen. It's the same as the picture that's on the front of your bulletin. I've seen this several times over the years. This is a sheep sitting on a chaise lounge there, which some of us like to, are hoping we get better weather to do that. And he is reading Sheep Guy Digest. He's also got his uh, iPod on, and he's got a radio blaring, a, a computer and a TV. And he says, I wonder why I don't hear from the shepherd anymore. You see the shepherd is in the background calling. And if you notice, the Bible is kind of underneath some things. We need to hear the voice of the shepherd. So let's talk about how that happens. You can actually leave that slide up if you want while I'm talking. Uh, first, we need to be prepared to hear his voice. The story is told of a man who was having difficulty communicating with his wife, and he concluded that she was becoming hard of hearing. So he decided to conduct a test without her knowing it. One evening, he sat in a chair on the far side of the room. Her back was to him, and she couldn't see him. Very quietly, he whispered, Can you hear me? There was no response. So he moved a little closer, and he asked again, Can you hear me now? Still no reply. Then he edged closer and whispered the same words again with no answer. Finally, he moved right behind her chair and said, Can you hear me now? To his surprise and chagrin, she responded with irritation for the fourth time, yes. <laughs> you see, the hearing problem may not be with God not speaking, but with us not listening. To hear the voice of the shepherd, we have to be inclined to hear. And that involves at least three things. First, we have to be a sheep of his flock. In John chapter 10, verse 26, Jesus says, You do not believe because you don't, don't belong to my sheep. You have to know Jesus in order to hear his voice and know his voice. Second, you have to be attentive to his voice. Dennis Deese also told, told a story about President Franklin Roosevelt. Apparently, President Roosevelt got a little tired of smiling that expected presidential smile and uh, shake, shaking hands and saying all the usual things when he was in a greeting line. So one evening, he decided to see whether anybody was really listening to what he was saying. As each person came up to him with their hand extended, he flashed a big smile and said, I murdered my grandmother this morning. <laughs> People would automatically respond with things like, oh, how lovely. <laughs> Just continue your great work. Nobody listened to what he was actually saying except one foreign diplomat. Who, when the president said this, the diplomat said, I'm sure she had it coming. <laughs> Don't we do that, though? We act like we're listening, but we're not really hearing. We have to be attentive to hear the voice of God. We have to learn what his voice sounds like in the midst of all the voices that are around us. <clears throat> Scripture says, be still and know that I am God. How often are you still enough to be attentive to his voice? So we need to be a member of his flock and be attentive, but we also then need to be receptive to his voice. Have you ever tried to talk to someone who did not want to hear what you had to say? It's futile. I mean, moms, all the moms here today, think about trying to help a child do something that they think they can handle. I can do it myself. Right? And often, we don't hear God's voice because the voice that we're most attentive and receptive to is our own voice. Human wisdom and God's wisdom are not equal. Are you willing to receive and accept what God says, no matter what? Once we're prepared, how will we know his voice? How, how do we know God's voice once we're prepared? Say, you know, Pastor, I'm one of his sheep. I'm attentive. I'm receptive. How do I know his voice? Well, let me give you some ways that God speaks to us. First of all, he speaks to us through what we read every week in church through his word, the Holy Scriptures. That's the book that's kind of buried in that, in that slide. 
beneath other things. You see, we get to know someone's voice by spending time with them. In the same way we learn who God is and what his voice sounds like, by learning who he is from his revealed word. God will never tell us to do anything that contradicts his revealed word. I can remember many, many years ago when our kids were little, Patrick and I knew a couple that were getting a divorce. And their kids were about the same age as, as ours, at least their younger one was. And the wife was having an affair, and she said it was okay because God wanted her to be happy. And I've heard other people say that God is telling them that what they're doing is okay, even though what they're doing is clearly contrary to Scripture. And that's not God's voice. That's my voice. That's Satan's voice. That's the world's voice. It's not God's. God will never tell us to be cruel. He will never tell us to be angry, bitter, malicious, or manipulative of people. He will never tell us to be unfaithful to our families, and he will never tell us to lie. His voice will never tell us to do something that is contrary to his revealed word. Amen. So as we spend time in his word, we get to know what his voice is. We also hear God's voice through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us understand God's revealed character in his word on an intimate, personal level because he lives in us. It is God's presence in us by the person of the Holy Spirit. But he doesn't force us. He waits for us to surrender our will and our paths to him so that we can hear and follow the voice that is often distant and small compared to the other voices around us. And so when people say, God spoke to me or God told me, they aren't usually talking about an audible voice, but they're talking about the voice of the Holy Spirit in the soul. A voice that will illuminate the scripture to us and translate that into guidance for our lives. So we hear God's voice through his word, through the Holy Spirit. We also hear God's voice through our experiences. We learn from the experiences of our life, both the good experiences and the bad. <clears throat> Often when I'm doubting that I'm hearing God's voice, someone in my life will affirm the path that I'm on. It's a reassurance from God that, yes, I am hearing his voice. Often that happens when uh, some, there has been doubt raised or I'm going into something that seems like a difficult trial when I'm receiving a lot of criticism from other people, when people aren't happy about something in my life, or when people are bringing up my past to say, you, you know, you, you know how you are, you know your past, to prove that I'm not hearing from God, that's when God will send someone in my life to affirm the things that I'm hearing, that I'm knowing of his voice from scripture. You know, last week I spoke on being broken vessels. And even in our failures and our missteps and our weaknesses along the way, we find opportunities to turn our eyes and our ears to the shepherd to listen for his voice. You see, none of us in this room are the same people that we were in the past. Look at Peter and the disciples. They turned to hear the voice of the shepherd, and their failure was turned into fruitfulness for the kingdom. The voice of the shepherd will speak through our experiences and give us hope and give us guidance. Then God also speaks through your pastor, hopefully, and your teachers. I can't tell you how many times the Lord has begun to speak to me and it's confirmed <coughs> over and over by pastors and teachers I've heard during the week. Often on a Sunday morning, we have particular pastors we listen to in the morning and they'll be talking about something that I'm either going to preach this morning or that I'm writing for the following week. We can hear the voice of God and learn from his scriptures, definitely. But the Lord has also designated teachers and pastors to proclaim his word, and he uses them to speak to us. Now, hear me when I say, this is not a formula. Oh, if I do all these things, I'll hear God's voice. It's not a formula. It's a relationship. The sheep have a relationship. 
relationship with a shepherd. We have a relationship with our Lord. A Lord whose voice we know, who we can trust, and who we follow. And that's by faith. By faith we believe that God speaks to us through his word, through the Holy Spirit, through our spirit life experiences, and through the pastors and teachers and mentors that he has surrounded us with. God wants you to hear him. The question is, are you listening? Do you know your shepherd's voice? Or, like this sheep, are the other things that you're listening to drowning him out? Psalm 23 is a favorite that I've read many times, unfortunately, in these past several months because it's read a lot at funerals. And in that passage, it speaks about the shepherd leading the sheep to green pastures. Sheep will stay in the same pasture and just eat it to bare dirt if you leave them there. They don't want to move. The shepherd moves them to the place they need to be. We don't always like new pastures, do we? We like the one that we're in. The one we're in is just fine. I'm, I'm comfortable in this pasture. And we don't want to be led. We want to lead. Jesus, I want to go to that pasture over there, not to this one here. But the shepherd knows better than we. He knows what we need. Even if it might not be what we're used to or what we're comfortable with. And I think this word from this passage today, from the scripture, is still so important. Do we know our shepherd's voice? And are we willing to heed it and to follow him? Will we hear his voice over our own? over fear, over every other voice, and will we choose to walk in the direction of his voice to green pastures? Will you pray with me? Jesus, we know all these scriptures, and interestingly, even though the passages that speak of you as our shepherd are so comforting, we also have to grapple with the truth that the sheep need to follow the shepherd where he leads. Father, build our trust and our faith in you that you are indeed the good shepherd. That you desire us to, to move into pastures of your choosing, of your design. Father, may we in this week recognize when we are listening to voices other than yours when we are allowing the world around us or people around us who are not a part of your flock to influence us, to move in places that are not in agreement with who you are. Give us a hunger and a thirst to be in your word, to know who you are, to know what your voice sounds like so that, you know, like my children saying I sound like grandma, people will know that we sound like you. Make us sensitive to your Holy Spirit's presence in us. Pull us back and allow us to be still and know who you are. 